Tropical disturbance off the coast of India near Chennai on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. weather bulletin for November 23rd. Well we're racing towards the finish line in the northern hemisphere seasons and look at that no tropical cyclones active anywhere in the world now for the first time in goodness knows how long I can't remember the last time we saw this on our screens. Uh, so we are stuck at 89 storms this year so far but we are code blue because of the system making landfall near India. On day 176 of Atlantic hurricane season though there is nothing still to track there in the Atlantic and nothing expected in the next five days. Chances of late season activity reducing but still not out of the question. In the eastern Pacific it's even more unlikely on day 193 of hurricane season. Only two storms have formed after this calendar date and they were both a very long time ago. No areas of interest here right now and nothing expected in the next five days there either. Into the Western Pacific, our analyst team have marked a 10% system, Invest 99W, which is located near the Micronesian Islands and will pass south of Guam over the next few days and track towards Yap and eventually further into the Philippine Sea. Low chance of formation. And in the Indian Ocean, officially nothing to track now, but we are still eyeing the uh, remnants of that disturbance, which is just about making landfall on the coast of India. Funny how tonight's headline is something that doesn't officially exist, but there we go. We're struggling right now to come up with any. Let's check the satellite imagery then across the Atlantic. This is what it's looking like here, an enormous dry air gulf there covering the Caribbean through Puerto Rico and out onto the uh, Atlantic Ocean proper. And then that line of moisture on the northern side brushing through Florida and the southern Gulf states and towards the Outer Banks and right way out to sea typical late season pattern and that stems from the eastern pacific in part there and the uh the uh, Central American continent, a little bit of moisture here and there but really nothing special, no rotation spotted and even the cloud tops are pretty, uh, pretty modest in most of those areas. Check the Western Pacific and you can quite clearly see Invest 99W, it's that very disorganized area of thunderstorms to the southeast of Guam there. Uh, it's not moving very much just yet and rotation is also hard to come by. Convection is blowing up in bits and bobs but nothing sustaining so it's a very uh, disorganized system right now. Indian Ocean, you might see some convection blowing up along the coast of India there that just dies off in the last few hours and one or two little areas still trying to continue and sustain themselves. The depression in the southern Indian Ocean also dying off as well. Australian region gives you a better view of that area and over Australia itself a few little thunderstorms pushing inland over mainly uh, sparsely desert areas in the northwest and in the Northern Territory. Generally though out in the southern hemisphere very quiet. Sea surface temperatures, if it still matters, well, they are still pushing on. 30 degrees in one slot there in the eastern Pacific. If a late season storm does spin up in that area, it might have a chance. In the Atlantic Ocean, it's the Caribbean that still has the warmest waters. The um, loop current and the Gulf Stream looks like they are really breaking down now in the last week, particularly we've noticed that, and the northern Gulf really starting to cool. It's the Caribbean that's all that's left really for any serious activity. 28 degrees plus. In the Indian Ocean it's still looking decent uh, though a little bit cooler off the coast of India there in Bangladesh uh, but where that system is 28 degrees Celsius. Looking towards the southern Indian Ocean that's still warming but not quite as much as we expected near Christmas Island. Still 28 degrees quite commonplace and look at the western Pacific we sometimes get late season uh, typhoon cruisers that move through there at low latitudes 28 to 30 degrees Celsius still quite common in the western Pacific so Keep watching out in that area all the way to the end is my advice. 
Well, the sea surface temperature anomalies also uh, back up that claim because it is above average there in the Western Pacific. East Pac not so much with the La Nina still out in force. The Atlantic is still quite above average, particularly in the subtropics, um, and we may still get cold core uh, origin systems that might form out in the open Atlantic. Think Melissa in 2013 is what first comes to my mind. And this is the oceanic heat content. You can see what it looks like here in the Atlantic. Um, the Western uh, Caribbean still got that hot pocket and extending up to Haiti. Eastern Pacific still one or two little blobs. I don't think anything will take advantage of that now. And in the Western Pacific we still have a few decent areas there. West of Guam drawing a line to the Philippines. That's where that system's tracking into. So we'll keep watching that. Short-term computer models starting in an odd place. This is the Central Pacific and the GFS is, funnily enough, developing a tropical cyclone on day four now in the Central Pacific. Not backed up by any other models yet and really it's only backed up by about 20% of the GFS ensembles. But if we see this uh, run materialize in a few other models, then this will get very interesting for a potential late season uh, Central Pacific storm. I was lost for words there, it's such a surprise. Western Pacific, we're drawing a little oblong there which shows where the system 99W will be tracking into. You can still just about track it there but it's difficult to see, that's why we've drawn the little oval. But that's where it's headed, basically from the right hand side to the left, you can see it there entering that area and we'll remove the shape now and you can just see that little bit of rotation moving in northwest northwesterly um, struggling for the most part and really nothing comes of it on this latest GFS run. Check out the precipitation over the next seven days and you'll have noticed this has changed as well from the last uh, update that we did uh, but we're still looking at uh, elevated rainfall totals for quite a few areas in the Micronesian Islands over the next few days and extending up to Guam and the Philippine Islands particularly in the south and east. Uh, but at the moment on the GFS there's that there in Guam 2.4 inches, 1.7 in Palau, 1.4 in Yap, 2.6 I think that's Pompeii in the east in Micronesia that's uh, just over 50 millimeters and getting up above 100 millimeters over parts of the Philippines that's for the next seven days so we're really not looking at ridiculously high rainfall totals there as it stands right now. Uh, certainly if something does develop in the Western Pacific, we're probably looking towards the end of that seven day period before we can start to think about rainfall. Into the longer range, this is the medium range, day five to 10, and guess what we now have in the five to 10 day range? No, not an Atlantic storm, but a system that develops in the Eastern Pacific after crossing over as a weak disturbance there over Costa Rica and southern Nicaragua and it looks like there uh, towards the end of that 10 day period it starts developing maybe into a tropical storm uh, it's very uh, heavily loaded on the northern side will it get that circulation sorted out it doesn't there in that 10 day period but it gets really close western pacific what are we looking at here well GFS is throwing up a low latitude system a very small system as well at that. Whether this happens or not, I'm not sure. And that glances the southern tip of Mindanao, a tiny system. Uh, and it really stretches the uh, plausibility barrier there. That's an incredibly low latitude. I think that's four degrees north there, uh, continuing westwards, um, almost due west, and then moves through the southern Philippines and into the Sulu Sea. Uh, only one or two cyclones have ever lasted in the Sulu Sea pro uh, properly. Uh, so I doubt that. Australian region also in that 10-day uh, period, near the end of that uh, period as well, a spin-up tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentaria. There it is, blinking, you miss it, uh, slamming into the... Um um, I've forgotten the name of that peninsula, the Cape York Peninsula, and then uh, further into Queensland, moving to the southeast, right at the very end of that 10-day period. Interesting. That's all the serious stuff done with. At this point, you can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. We have all of our usual items, including our full season individual animations on request at any time, bespoke, made for you, and our still waiting for Hone t-shirt. Wonderful Christmas present. But will Hone arrive before that to scare everyone off and make us look really silly? Hopefully not. In the silly range, what happens to that system in the Eastern Pacific? It um, I think it does become a tropical cyclone there for a brief time period uh, and that's probably on day 12, day 13 as it moves up the western coast of Mexico. Certainly an interesting thing to see happen if it does indeed happen. 
and that would be really crazy. If you want an idea about the history, you've got to go back to 1930 when a weak tropical storm formed in the first week of December in the Eastern Pacific. Wow. Well, Hurricane Week is coming up soon. We are now only five days away, would you believe? And that time has really gone on and we're getting very panicked because nothing's finished yet. No, just kidding. A lot of the features are finished and we're going to have a real fun time regardless of where we're up to that week. Anyway, let's take a look at the On This Day feature and we're looking back at November 23rd, 1983, where we had a Category 4 Typhoon, Orchid which was moving towards the Philippines there and it was moving northwestwards I believe uh, reaching its peak on this day at sea um, and I think it continued northwestwards I can't remember now whether it recurved or not I think it was weakening just off the coast of the Philippines if I remember rightly Percy was about to die off off Palawan moving northeast and we have Tropical Cyclone 5S which never got a name a brief tropical storm in the southwest Indian Ocean Back to today, and the next name on the Atlantic Storm list, should we get any more, is Owen in the Eastern Pacific. Could it be Surprise Seymour as we enter December? We'll have to wait and see on that. And could it be a Surprise Hone? Maybe a little bit more likely now than we last saw. That's the next name in the Central Pacific. In the West Pack, next up is Pakar, and in the North Indian Ocean, it's Mandus. And I thought we might have got it during this... Uh, tropical system that we had but it never got there in the end it got pretty close and in the southern hemisphere the next name in the australian region is darian the southwest indian ocean is chiniso and in the south pacific it's harley we'll be back again for another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night